church and uh, what a privilege it is to be with you here this morning i've missed a couple of appointments because i was double booked but i'm happy to be back at my home church allow me now to greet you all in the name of jesus christ and may that be a reminder to you that you are most welcome Please greet all of those around you, and especially the ones you haven't come to church with, and tell them why you love Jesus. While standing, let's commence with our call to worship as I read to you Psalm 116. It says here, I love the Lord, for he heard my voice, he heard my cry for mercy, because he turned his ear to me. I will call on him as long as I live. The cords of death entangle me. The anguish of the grief came over me. I was overcome by distress and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. Lord, save me. What shall I return to the Lord for all of his goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful servants. Truly I am your servant, Lord. I serve you just as my mother did. You have freed me from my chains. I will sacrifice a thanks offering to you and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. The congregation may be seated. And let's bow our heads in prayer for the opening prayer. 
I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Loving Father, we thank you this morning that we can gather as your family to bring praise and glory to your name and help us to focus on you and on you alone as the sustainer of our comfort and joy and for being the God of all salvation and miracles. You are truly big and our minds cannot fathom this mysterious God but we do know and accept that you are real and able to do the unthinkable for each one of us. We are grateful that your word draws us into a personal relationship with Jesus. And bless our songs this, of praise this morning as we remember the Trinity, one God in three persons, and may our testimonies in song Touch the hearts of our community and always. In Jesus' name, Amen. So now over to our worship team. Uh, we ask that we sing a hymn, I am thine, O Lord. I have heard thy voice, told thy love to me. Shall we stand? You, you might not be familiar with the hymn, or you might be familiar with them. I find it's helpful with hymns, whether you know them or not, to sing them really loudly, because they're quite obvious, and you'll find your way, and we'll be louder than you, I promise. I am thine, O Lord. Let's stand. I 
knew you would know the song. Told him he knew it. may be seated. It's time for our prayer confession. Let's bow our heads in prayer. A holy and most merciful God, what a terrifying thought it is to be in your presence, knowing full well that you are able to see right through us and that we cannot hide anything from you. Week by week, we come to your sanctuary and plead for the forgiveness of our sins. 
And yet week by week we commit the same sins in thought, word and deed. And today we approach you to say how sorry we are for these sins that eventually cause hurt and resentment. And Lord, have mercy on us. Help us, dear God, to find peace and solace in your word, to calm our minds, and that we select love instead of hate, and truth instead of ignorance or fallacy. And thank you for the spoken word that provides reason for us to align ourselves with your will. And as we grow spiritually, Lord, May we see the benefit of increasing you in our lives while decreasing the bad and the ugly by living a holy life. In Jesus' saving name, amen. Thanks be to God. Join me as we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. It's now time for our notices, so I'll call on Brian to come and tell us what's happening in our community. Morning. I think... Um Saturday the 29th, short meeting. So really, all men, please come and join us. Um, it's part of being part of the church. So come and see what we've got to do, and let's join the men. Then secondly, we've got um, the, the Natty Knitters, I think, 2 to 5 on Saturday afternoon. Uh, we, we are actually, um, I think they're knitting. Uh, Arlene, is it, uh, what are they knitting? Uh, beanies, okay, they're knitting beanies. So please join us if you can. And then the uh, month is the May is the month of warm. So this is the month that we look to try and uh, collect as much as we can, so that we can actually so any blankets or stuff that you've got here, um, a collection at the front there where you can just drop it off. Please make sure it's clean, okay? Because I a bit of a problem for us. Can't give us clean. Don't throw your rubbish away. Give us stuff that can actually. Really, really appreciate. And then the third thing was just going to uh, start painting this wall over here. So we're going to start a painting fund, and Stuart, uh, you, you let everybody know what's what's happening about that. But let you know. And then most importantly, I want to call on Rolf and just come and talk about the manner for mercy for us. While he's coming up, are there any other mis uh, notices that I may have missed? Birthday. Oh. Uh, good morning, church. I greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, you would have received when you came into church this morning a flyer from uh, Denise, the Manor of Mercy, Manor and Mercy um, retreat that will happen here in two weeks' time. Um, these participants are this could impact on your life, your spiritual life. Um, Gus has spoke, spoken often about it, and I have here too. Um, the book that you'll get is this. It's, uh, and amazingly, this book will take you on the journey from Genesis to Revelation in three days. But it, <coughs> it's, it talks really to the golden thread that runs through Scripture. And that for, for those who participated in it, it has been transformative in their spiritual journey. And so I would encourage you to, to look at it very carefully, prayerfully, contemplate on it, and see if it is the right thing for you to do at this time in your spiritual journey. Um, I just want to read 
the introduction, part of the introduction from the, by the author. The author is Daniel Erlander, uh, who wrote this some time ago. Uh, as you know from the, the publicity, that Reverend Story, Alan Story, will be uh, leading this here. He's done this course for many years and, and has done it internationally also. Um, often in America, presenting a course that just started in America. Um, so it's something that is really, I know, will benefit from should you choose to go on it. And this is the introduction. This is a booklet about God, more specifically the God of the Bible, who is present and active in human history and in all creation. May I remind you of the audacity of this project. I'm convinced that authentic God talk can take place only in the context of trembling, of laughing at oneself, of praying for forgiveness, and of understanding that words can never capture the reality to which, that, which they point. And he agrees with uh, Douglas Hall, who says, to speak of the biblical God, the God who acts in the life of the world, is always to rush in where angels dare to tread. Only fools do it without fear and trembling. In, the spirit, in this spirit, I present this booklet in, in my attempt to tell you the story of God found in the pages of the Bible, both the Hebrew Scriptures and the New Testament. So, <clears throat> the cost of the course is, is 110 rand, and the cost is ready to, is, is to buy the book. Um, as I said, it would be over three days. It starts here on Friday night, the 5th of, of May. There will be a, a light supper to, to begin with, and then we'll go into the, the first um, presentations. Then on Saturday, um, we start at 8 and run through for the whole day. Uh, lunch will be provided as well as, um, as um, refreshments. And then on Sunday uh, afternoon, after the services here, uh, there will be a light lunch, and then we'll go into the final uh, episode or um, section of, of, the, of the retreat. I will be in the foyer. Um, I'm hopeful that, yes, he's got it done. Uh, uh, um, <clears throat> there has been opportunity for you to enroll on this course um, on, the web, on the website, the WhatsApp group. Okay, <clears throat> there we go, okay. But I will also have a form here, if, should you choose to want to actually enroll today, uh, or next week, so we'll be here next week to do the same. Um, I'll be there to tell you about it and give you the opportunity to page through this booklet as well. Thank you very much. Thanks, Rolf. Uh, I think I've said that uh, Manor and Mercy course was very influential in my life. Um, when I was considering my call to the ministry, I felt that I had a lot of questions. Uh, and what I liked the most about the Manor and Mercy course was I realized I wasn't the only person asking the questions and so it's not about answers it's about questions that we all have and some ideas about the answers to those questions and it gave me the ability to bring my faith uh, and my brain together in a in a very helpful way uh, not that either of them are very significant but um, I really thought it helped me to to understand why I believed what I believed and gave me the courage to become a minister. So, Man and Mercy course, I endorse it, 5 to 7 May, and we're going to be cooking the food. So what I suggest is you give your kids to somebody for the weekend, and then you come here and you won't have to wash dishes or cook or anything, and you can eat, and we'll also uh, have some trays out for some donations for the cost of the food. But don't let that stop you. Thank you. Um, the, we, we normally celebrate the birthdays and anniversaries at this time. 
Are there any birthdays that happened in this recent past that we need to acknowledge? Yes, I believe there's a lady here by the name of Jackie. Oh, and my wife, Sadie. <laughs> Please come forward. <laughs> and we won't point in any directions, but we know of a young man who's also turned a certain age recently. <laughs> Sorry, That's Eli. Wonderful. Any anniversaries that are celebrated this in this past week or the week to come? We really want to pray for you and for your <laughs> for these high moments in your at this moment, at this time. And then finally, before before we begin praying, just a reminder that there will be tea after the service, and so don't rush away. It might be difficult to stand outside in the rain today, but certainly there'll be lots of time for warm fellowship after the service. <laughs> Thank you. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Please stand, congregation. Generous God, we thank you for this opportunity to engage in an activity to return to you what you have given to us before. We do so with cheerful hearts because the promise made in Micah says that you will open the windows of heaven and allow your blessings to fall on us. And we pray for a double blessing for those who could not give anything and allow your Holy Spirit to increase that joy as we all seek more of you. And bless our deeds as a community who in all humility work to grow your kingdom all for the sake of your glory. We thank you for our Sunday school children and their willingness to learn more about you. And bless their teachers who voluntarily come to church to be the harbingers of good news to them so that they can see themselves becoming more like Jesus daily. And Lord, this morning as the people standing here in front celebrate their birthdays, and we also ask dear Father, that you will bless them in a way that they all will feel that you would add, continue to add life to their years. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. And also invite the Sunday school children and their teachers to go to their classes. Yep. That was my next point. Oh, thank cool. you. Thanks. <laughs> I'm now at this point just going to call on uh, on Eileen just to come and read scripture for us. But before you read scripture, Eileen, I just want to say a prayer before then. It's fine. Come on. Come on. Let us bow our heads. Your word, Lord God, is precious to each one of us and certainly moves us in a direction that will challenge our hearts and minds, resulting in repentance that would make us more like Jesus. And thank you for this opportunity that allows us to grow spiritually. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm reading from Acts chapter 2, verses 14, and then 36 to 41. That addresses the crowd. Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter, the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off all whom the Lord our God will call. 
With many other words, he warned them, pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized. About 3,000 added to their number that day. This is the word of the Lord. I, I must just say, to tell you this story very, very quickly. Um, it was Sadie's birthday on the 19th, and Tyler, who was sitting there next to her, who was in Sunday school now, said to her, Oma, how old are you today? And Sadie said, I am 36. <laughs> anyway, um, I think it's time for our next song now. Gus, I'm not sure which one it is. <laughs> Will you please lead us? So we stand. song we could ever sing, worthy of all the praise we could ever bring, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you, we live for you. Holy, there is no one like you, there is none beside. the 
the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. Let's be seated. Amen. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, we pray. Amen. This morning, the theme of my sermon, or the title is, is Moments of Recognition. Now, Last week you'll recall that Gus preached from Peter and I think he was secretly hoping that I would continue uh, in that vein. But unfortunately I had already started working on ACT. And so this morning we continue with the theme of Pentecost 
which led to the birth of the church. Now, traditionally, in years gone by, uh, uh, people used to come to church wearing red, and I see Ralph has got something red on, and even uh, 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 the, the Gray family. And uh, for that, red color signified the, the Holy Spirit that descended upon the disciples, and it appeared like flames burning on their heads. And some people also used to come to church in green because it was the beginning of spring and that's the time when the buds start uh, uh, growing and, and you see all this greenery. And so they, those people then lived very, very close to their traditions. And I sometimes wonder whether you have actually thought why God chose this day Pentecost for, for Peter to preach the word to this large crowd, this gathering of people, because prior to this reading that we've read, it says there that there were people from all over that came into Jerusalem to celebrate Pentecost, and they are normally referred to as the diaspora. And, uh, and so these people then were subject to the preaching of Peter. Now, I just wonder how many of you have actually watched a film where there were moments of recognition that would have stirred your emotions. And one such film that comes to mind is um, The Passion of the Christ that was produced and directed by Mel Gibson. Do you... Remember the scenes where Jesus was um, brutally assaulted and then also crucified to the cross. I must tell you, while we were watching this movie, it was at my brother-in-law's place, so there were Muslims and Christians sitting there watching this, this uh, movie. And, uh, and at some point, somebody said, where are the tissues? And somebody had to go and grab a tissue, the, a box of tissues, and bring it in. And eventually there was a little bit of a fight because everybody wanted a tissue. And that moment of recognition was is that Jesus, who was so innocent, was led to die. And even after his death, there were so many people in Jerusalem that whenever they spoke, remembered Jesus and spoke about his death. But you know, Peter used the opportunity to reflect on this, on this death of Jesus, because he describes the recognition that springs from an accusation. That's what he said to them. He says, you crucified our Lord. He told them exactly what their feeling was and what God did to Jesus. Because it says there in verse 36, he says, this Jesus whom you crucified, was, it was a serious indictment against all of them. And then Peter said that God made him both Lord and Messiah. And so the first time I read it, I also misinterpreted this message that Peter was bringing to the people. This Jesus whom you crucified, it was an indictment against the Jews because he was addressing a Jewish crowd. And I'm sure some of the people must have murmured and said, but we weren't here when uh, Jesus was uh, pulled before Pilate or even taken in front of Herod, and then brought again back to Pilate. But Peter knew in his heart that those instigators and the limited number of the temple elite were the ones who stood there and said to Pilate, execute him, because they thought that they had Jesus now and that they were now expecting justice. 
Peter also knew that there were people in the crowd who truly loved Jesus. And I want to quote here from Luke 23, verse 27. If, uh, uh, can you bring up Luke 23, verse 27 there? For it says there, a large number of people followed him, and this is Jesus, including women who mourned and wailed for him. And so therefore, Peter couldn't put the primary blame for Jesus' death on all the Jews in the assembly. No. And Peter's point was made to generalize the larger group of Jews who did not attempt to recognize the claims made about Jesus and his authority. And I also want to quote again from Luke 17, verse 25, that says, But first, he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. You see, Peter tried to warn these Jews who were listening to him that they were guilty of ignorance. Now, I want to qualify that by giving you an example. Do you remember that during the period that Hitler was in power, he gave instructions for his people to, to murder six million Jews. And what did the rest of the community do? Absolutely nothing. And the church eventually realized that they were complicit in all of these murders. And they went to the Jewish authority and said, we apologize for our role. And they did so because they did nothing because they were not Jews. Do you blame Peter for, for saying to these Jews that they killed Jesus because of their ignorance? In Acts 13 verse 27, it says, the people of Jerusalem and their rulers did not recognize Jesus. Yet in condemning him, they fulfilled the words of the prophets that are read every Sabbath. So you see, the whole of humanity failed to recognize that God was doing what God was doing through Jesus. His resurrection and exaltation now left humanity without an excuse. So after considering Peter's accusatory remarks that they bear responsibility for the Messiah's death, that is, their understanding that they are in conflict with God's purposes and recognizing the implicit threat of judgment. And the crowd then interrupted Peter and requested measures for correction. So Peter, listening to this, thought, wow, this is the time for me to start delivering the good news to these people. And Peter calls for repentance. Now sometimes I just wonder, is that most people would sometimes say, how do I know that I am truly saved? Do you really know that you are saved? And now listen to this. And Peter calls for repentance. He says, you must repent. So when we think of the moral category of the meaning of the word repentance, we probably think of reformed behavior, expressions of remorse, or the rectification of wrongs. But the Greek word metanoia means something different because it refers to a changed mind or a new understanding. You see, what God has done through Christ creates a point of recognition about the relationship between God and Christ. And this new understanding, of course, leads to new possibilities. Secondly, Peter employs the Trinitarian formula. I wonder how many of you picked up the Trinity in this passage that was read. 
because Peter then called for baptism. And he says to them, is that they must be baptized in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of their sin. Now the Greek word for forgiveness does not exist because the, the Greeks never believed that, that whatever they did was, was sin. But they had a word that came very close and it is that word metanoia. Uh, sorry, the, the, the word that comes very close is aphesis. It means to be released. And that is consistent with what happened in the Old Testament because the chief priest would take a goat and they would heap the sins of the community on that goat and release the goat into the wilderness. But Peter does not explain the baptismal rite, probably because the Jews were familiar with the rite. So in the wake of Jesus' resurrection, baptism symbolizes more than just the cleansing defilement. And you would know that once someone is submerged in water, they die to sin. And when they emerge from that water, they emerge into a new life. And so, so this uh, symbolism of, of, of defilement that has been cleansed goes hand in hand with the death and the sinful self and the resurrection into a new life. You see, this name of Jesus is synonymous with the word salvation because the name of Jesus means Savior. And then Peter also declares that the Holy Spirit is to promise to all whom God calls. Now you will remember that Gus, some time ago, probably about three years ago, if my memory serves me correct, said that there is no magical formula for getting the Holy Spirit to descend into our lives. He says that if you need the Holy Spirit, all you need to do is to ask for it. And it says here in Acts 2 verse 49, it says here, the promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord your God will call. And it seems yet that God is the one who always has the last word. And it reminds me about myself, is that at home I always have the last word, even if it is to say to Sadie, I am sorry for the things that I've done. But God is the only one who can justify a sinner. Now, justification is a legal term that is used in the courts. And Peter is very fond of using it even in his uh, rhetoric. And, and in this sense here is that Jesus also releases you from your sin by justifying us. So are your concerns answered about whether you have been saved through baptism and the saving grace of God? So in conclusion, I want to say that our moments of recognition should begin when we experience change. I also want to remind you about the vision of our church, which Gus wrote for us. And we sang it a few weeks ago that says, we want to be more like Jesus. We need all the help we can get. Uh, let me not sing. But I want to say you, I want to say to you this morning that we cannot be more like Jesus without a regular change of mind. Amen. Let us pray. Ever present God, we thank you for the important message, message delivered to us today and help us to reach the point of recognition in our faith that calls for repentance regularly. We want to be more like Jesus and be able to spread the good news to those who would listen to your word. And thank you for the character of Christ that demands that we adopt humility in our lives and to be obedient to the values you have made known to us. And two of the greatest values is to love and to forgive. And Father, the author 
to the Hebrew community wrote that your word is sharper than a two-edged sword and we feel that it contains so much power to achieve a change of mind like Peter's audience did at the birth of the church. Allow each evangelical steward here this morning to use your word to bring people to realize that Christian believers are forgiven. They are free. People given the capacity to live in authentic relationship with God and with one another through the power of your Holy Spirit. And Lord, we thank you also for our faith and that we would seek opportunities for transformation and to use our growth and expertise to assist those who are hurting because of abuse, sickness, pain and suffering, and those who are unemployed, lonely, or in bereavement. And we pray this prayer in the powerful name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. I am not licensed to be able to baptize you because I remember last time Gus asked each one of us to come forward and to make the sign of the cross as a sign that we have all been saved and forgiven. And I want you to remember that in your hearts. Worship team, it's time to return for we are going to sing our final song. I'd like to thank Edmund for giving me the day off today. Thanks, Edmund. <laughs> and such a, an important reminder of our gift of salvation. We're going to stand and sing shout to the Lord. Um, if you are getting a free baptism from the ceiling today, or if you found that you sat in a damp chair, won't you tell Stuart, Stuart Wave, Wave at these people so that he knows where the water comes through. He's very afraid of heights, but I've got a long ladder. I'm going to send him to the top with some press stick. Chewing gum. Let's worship together. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My Yeah. 
I was just uh, reminded by Brian just to reinforce uh, all the tea, tea and coffee drinkers uh, gather at the, on your right side right there at the back and enjoy it. But before you leave, uh, allow me to dismiss you with the following message. I'd like to wish you a splendid week ahead and consider your safety and that of your family as well. Let's all say the benediction together. May the, May the grace, grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the, and love the love of God, God and the, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Spirit be with us all, all now and, and forevermore. Amen. Now unto him who is able to keep, able to His glory with, with exceeding joy to the only wise God.